Well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, just want to make sure we start off with um, some administrative stuff. So we are recording this uh, conversation um, and this webinar. So if you don't consent uh, to the recording, please go ahead and, and drop off and uh, we can send you a link to the recording after we're, uh, after we're all done here. So, all right, so just a quick introduction. My name is Mark Potts. I am VP of Global Services at, uh, at Virtual Z. Um, specializing in, in helping con our consulting services and building our consulting services within Virtual Z uh, to help our clients with when it comes to um, strategies around what to do with their data uh, on the mainframe and accessing that data off the mainframe. And so today we're going to talk about um, one of our products, Lozen, and how Lozen can help with in place modernization. Um, for clients with the mainframe and how they can access data such as vSAM data and QSAM data in a more agile way and a, in a more streamlined way um, than clients typically access it today. So as we get into a talk to clients around the world around mainframe modernization uh, and Virtual Z and Virtual Z's products like Lozen and, and Zach, um, we are seeing three major trends when we're talking to our clients. Um, the first trend is around business agility. Most to new policies, um, new regulations, new competitors in the market, they need to be able to respond to those, those types of things in a quick, efficient manner, more efficient and quicker than they do today, right? And the mainframe, as many of us know, with the legacy code that's out there, 40 plus years, um, a lack of talent, right, is also a big challenge. It's not easy to achieve that business agility and be able to respond to market demands. And then lastly, many of our clients are looking at cost. How do I actually reduce some of my costs uh, when it comes to the mainframe and the things that I want to do with the mainframe. And in today's uh, uh, webinar, we'll talk about uh, accessing data and how you can do that in a more cost efficient way with Lozen. So as we go through this presentation, this webinar, I'm going to touch on all three of these things and, and share the benefits of how Lozen helps with business agility, um, helps with saving costs uh, when accessing data on the mainframe, um, and also can help simplify um, the access so that uh, you don't need as many mainframe uh, legacy folks or people that understand the mainframe to actually access that data. So it helps with some of the talent challenges as well. And so one of the things that when we're also talking to our clients is we're talking to them about the different approaches around their modernization journey. And there's really six approaches that our clients are, are taking uh, when they're modernizing their mainframe applications. The first one is the la around language migration. So you've heard of companies probably like Astadia, TSRI, Cloud, and others that are converting legacy code like COBOL, right? And converting it to a more modern after they're converted off the mainframe, whether that be in a private or public cloud, more, more common than not it, it is with the hyperscalers like AWS, Azure, or Google, right? Um, the second uh, uh, approach we're seeing is around emulation. So working with uh, MicroFocus or Rank code, taking that COBOL code and um, deploying it off the mainframe, running it in one of those emulators, uh, it's still typically uh, or most commonly still running in your legacy code like COBOL. Sometimes you got to convert the assembler or rewrite the assembler, but more often than not, you're really still running um, your COBOL code in, in the emulator, uh, just like you would on the mainframe. Um, and then replace, um, we are seeing clients where new SaaS packages or new software packages out there can replace some of the applications running on the mainframe. Uh, we're also seeing clients rewrite or develop new cloud native applications from scratch. Uh, so using the new capabilities like AWS, it's on AWS, Google and Azure to build some of those new um, new applications at speed with the latest and greatest tools um, and then modernize those applications. Uh, retire, we are seeing a good amount of um, applications get retired that just aren't being used as much anymore. Um, but then the last one and what we'll talk about today is we are seeing a good amount of clients that are nervous about doing a language migration potentially or an emulation or just replacing or doing a cloud native application for various reasons 
they just want to achieve business agility, lower cost, and free up some of their talents um, by modernizing in place, whether that's better DevOps um, or providing better access to the mainframe data, like we're going to talk about here, um, so that they can do better data AI analytics in the cloud as well. All right, so level setting on the common problem, right? So, you know, most of us that are probably joining this call have some sort of interest in the mainframe and you have probably a decent background in the mainframe and understand the mainframe. But just in case those that don't, right, the mainframe has been around for over 40 plus years. And believe it or not, there's over 70% of enterprise data is still on the mainframe, right? And it's in um, unique formats. It's in uh, IMS, it's in IDMS, it's in vSAM, it's in QSAM, right? Type file formats. And those are always easily accessed um, from outside the mainframe. And so that's one of the main reasons why Virtual Z set off to create the product closing is to provide better access to that data, right? And if we look at how people access that data today, they're typically doing it with ETL, they're doing it with FTP, they're doing it with APIs where they're doing something maybe like Zos Connects and then they're creating a new COBOL code or existing COBOL code, but it's still all running on ZOS, right? which can increase your, your MIPS and your consumption of the mainframe and, and how much you run on the mainframe. Um, the most, co most common ETL tools aren't zip eligible, right? So they're running on ZOS. And so when they run, they're expensive um, and they consume a good portion of your MIPS uh, for, for clients that have ETL and are looking to use ETL to get data to the cloud as we're showing on the right-hand side. So as we start thinking about migration and modernizing these applications, right? We're going to take some of these applications, um, convert them, like I said, either to Java or .NET, or run them in emulators, or um, you know, move them over to or off the mainframe. They're going to need uh, access to the data sitting on the mainframe. Now there are exceptions to cases to that. So some of the the um, self-contained applications where you know, you might have a batch job that only is the only job or the only application that accesses from some vSAM data, then maybe that vSAM data goes with that batch job. But more often than not, in, than not, in large enterprise institutions, you're going to have hundreds and thousands, if not more, applications accessing shared data, right? So you might choose to move 100 batch jobs off the mainframe um, but you still have a thousand batch jobs still accessing that vSAM data, right? And this is where that ETL and that FTP and maybe even change data capture comes into place and it becomes complicated, right? You're trying to keep the data in sync that's on the mainframe with the data that's in the cloud or off the mainframe and vice versa, right? Um, you're doing some file conversions, you're doing some data conversions, it gets complex, you need a good amount of resources to keep that in sync, keep it up to, uh, up to date, um, and there's some complexities there, and there's some syncing. What we're looking to do and what Lozen solves is that complication, that extra effort, that cost to keep those, um, those ETL jobs, change data capture uh, programs that you have, we're looking to, so we are simplifying that, right? By creating direct, simple access to your vSAM data, QSAM data that's existing on the mainframe. And so as you move an application off, instead of moving the data with it, you keep the data where it is and you connect to Lozen that's running in a zip engine, right? So zip eligible. So it's not going to significantly, if at all, increase your MIPS, right? And provide you access. So essentially, we're modernizing in place the access to your vSAM data, QSAM data on the mainframe, right? And more data than just vSAM and QSAM as well. And so this greatly simplifies um, the access, right? Because we've modernized it in place and we've created connectors that I'll get to in a little bit and APIs to make it easier. But this helps you achieve that business agility that I started with, right? It gives you the access to that data in a matter of a month, right? It's not a complicated um, program, a product to install. We can, we can have it up and running with 30, in 30 days, um, and you can start accessing that data immediately, 
right? So you can build new cloud, cloud native applications if you want to. You can pull that data through ETL jobs running the cloud and not on the mainframe so that you can do uh, and access it for more um, analytics and data, data uh, and AI capabilities as you'd like as well, right? All right, and I mentioned the connectors, right? So we have native NFS, right, to connect to the cloud. Uh, we have MicroFocus. We worked with MicroFocus extensively for a long period of time to certify um, and develop a connector specifically for MicroFocus. So if you have this scenario where you're going to take, you know, like I said earlier, 100 batch jobs, move them into MicroFocus, use emulation to run those COBOL programs, but you still have a thousand applications running on the mainframe that are accessing that same vSAM data for this example, then you can leave that vSAM data where it is, move those applications, those hundred applications, and use the Lozen connector through MicroFocus to connect to Lozen on the mainframe and access and have full read-write capabilities of that vSAM data. The same is true with Lozen APIs that we've created. We've also created a MuleSoft connector as well, and then we also have the open APIs that we've created um, to connect to Lowe's and running on the mainframe, uh, running in a zip engine on the mainframe. A little bit more detail right around this, um, and you know our website has a good amount of detail as well, and we could always go into a lot more detail about how this was created um, and how these connectors were created. But again, spent a good amount of time with MicroFocus. They fully tested this, they gave it their blessing, um, and they currently could just speak to their clients about um, the full capabilities of this connector uh, with MicroFocus. Um, something similar with MuleSoft, we can provide a significant amount of detail around this. Um, and how the, the functionality basically calls, just like you would any sort of integration service through MuleSoft to Lowe's and running um, and, and add, gaining access to your vSAN data, for example, uh, on the mainframe as well. And then lastly, but not least, the Open API connector I talked about too. Um, just kind of showing you guys that we've gone through the details here. Uh, we have tested this and we do have the uh, Open API. Um, capabilities that we can share with you and go into more details if you guys would like as well. So um, we have demos um, available um, on our website, virtual, uh, virtualzcomputing.com slash Lozen slash demo, um, where you can access uh, various videos um, as well as an online uh, demo, um, self-service demo that you can access as well um, so that you can um, you know, really see how Lozen works and getting access to that data uh, and how simple it truly is to, to access it. So um, just summing up, right? I mean, our objective was Lozen is really to achieve um, business agility for our client by our clients so that they can easily access their data on the mainframe as well as reducing their costs and not requiring a significant amount of work or additional resources uh, mainframe resources, which we all know is difficult to find in the market. So thank you, everybody. And um, I will now open it up to questions, Elsa. So I've enabled everyone's microphones. If you have a question, please unmute yourself and ask away. Hopefully not everybody's shy. It's got to be at least one question out there. Well, we did and have. Elsa, we have, yeah, we have the pre pre received questions. Elsa, do you want to state those? Yep, just going to do that. Um, we did receive a couple questions um, during registration. Let me get yep. back to those. Okay, the first one is: Please comment on the recent IBM announcement of a Watson AI enabled solution for modernizing COBOL for conversion of COBOL to Java for deployment on ZOS. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question, um, and I did go out and read a good amount of the uh, material that's out there, um, as well as the uh, the video. Um, the video talks about it being very very early, right? Um, and that it's really just a proof of concept right now that they're they're working on. Um, I do think that is a trend in the market um, where you know the latest AI models and and everything that are out there um, will be used to convert a lot of this legacy COBOL similar type code to a more modern language. Um, I do think that's going to progress rapidly. Um, there's a lot, like I mentioned, already out there with um, 
uh, TSRI, CloudFrame, um, not to just, you know, there's plenty of others out there, Heirloom and others that are already out there in the market that do this. But I do think the um, the new AI capabilities that everybody's talking about and, and everything are really going to accelerate that. And who better than IBM, right, to come up with some, some AI models to really make that happen as well. And I should say, from as it ties into Lozen, um, again, as you migrate those programs off, you know the mainframe. Um, you know there's still going to be this 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 need to to access that data on the mainframe because in 95% of the cases you're not going to move everything off the mainframe. Too many of our too many of the clients are enterprise clients who have so much running on the mainframe. I just don't see a path for an enterprise client moving everything over overnight. Okay, Mark, we had one more question. Um, what is the best strategy to optimize new data model and to design target data models? The best. Um, I mean, I think it, it depends on what you're trying to achieve, right? Um, for many clients, right, if you're again, take the VSAM as an example, You've got hundreds of programs that are already accessing the vSAMP data, and to go into all the legacy code um, and convert that to a new data model doesn't seem like the best use of your time, right? Um, I would keep it in the format that it's in and, and the schema that it's in. Uh, in this case, vSAM, um, for the, because I keep picking on the vSAM example. Um, but if you're ultimately going to modernize and you have the ability to move some self-contained apps off, then yeah, you probably want to look at, are you going to rewrite? And if you're going to rewrite, then yeah, you could go and look at converting into a new relational model or, you know, no SQL or MongoDB, right? From vSAM to MongoDB is, is kind of a, a common path as well. Um, but I think in most cases, you're going to keep it in the exact same kind of data model and approach you have today. Um, but Lozen is going to give you the ability to access that data in a more modern way with APIs and, you know, make it a lot easier for your developers to access. If I did, hopefully, I'm, hopefully I answered the question if I understood it correctly. I'm not sure if anybody else wants to add to that. I see someone's got their hand up. Yeah, Mark. Hello. Companies up there. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, and they said behind the MuleSoft integration, is that mean you need MuleSoft plus one of those? Could you go back to that slide where you had, I think it was one or two slides ago. One more back, one more. Um, can you go back another slide? Oh, yeah, they, uh, go back one more slide, please. One more slide? Okay. Um, how do they? Oh no, it's one more back. I think it was an overall overall diagram oh. slide. Yeah. yeah, that one. That one. So these Mule ESP connectors. Do all these companies like Boomi and Tipco and Oracle need the Mule ESP connector to get it to to use your connectors or what? So we have one dedicated that we built just for Mule. Um, but no, like if you wanted to use Boomi or you wanted to use IBM um, integration bus or or any of these other Oracle integration, we could create a connector for those as well, right? Or you could use you know, the Open API, or you could use the Open API, or you could use the Open API. Is what I'm about to say. That's right. And the Open Open API is a Java based uh, API. Uh, I believe so. Dustin, is that right? I believe it is. Um, I mean, it's open API two and three compatible. I don't know if that's Java okay. specifically. Okay. okay. Yeah. Open a, a two or three compatible is good. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I know Mark. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I know the MuleSoft is a Java one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so that's Thank a drag you, and drop right in any point studio. So that's, that's that specific connector. Okay. And then they can just use the API to use your connector to read any of that data. Okay, fantastic. That's right. Yeah. 
there's also a demo specifically of the mule um, connector. <laughs> as well as open API um, <clears throat> that's demonstrated on logic apps if you go to our demo page. Okay. I, uh, I'd like to talk to you at some point in time. That'll be fantastic. Thank you. That'd be great. And we could do one for TIPCO as well. <laughs> You'll do one. Well, sorry, we could do a demonstration. Okay. That'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Th thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Elsa. No problem. Um, so, Mark, just FYI, I saw that Frank Driscoll joined. He was one of the people who submitted a question. So if you want to just touch base quickly on the IBM announcement of Watson AI enabled solution for modernizing COBOL, um, just touch on that briefly one more time. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, from everything I've read and, and going out and looking at the you know the videos that were posted as well, it's very early around that. Um, I mean, it, the whole new AI, AI capabilities and everything, it, it seems like kind of a, a no-brainer where the AI models are going to be built um, to really help um, generate, you know, more modern language from, from COBOL or similar, you know, any of those languages that are out there. Um, I'll be honest that the, the, the companies that are out there today, TSRI and, um, and CloudFrame and others, they do a pretty good job today um, actually converting, but I do see a, a path where they'll do more. I'm sorry. Great. Thank I you. I have a question. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to understand that the full data is compressed. When you are hiring the multiple, then how it could be? And then you are hiring the multiple. Sorry, Amila, there was a question there. We couldn't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. So, yeah. so I am talking about compressed data. The data has been compressed. That one row in DB2 having multiple lines. You may say 20, 20, 25. Entire page. Sorry, I still couldn't. I still couldn't hear. Yeah, it's really hard to hear you. You're breaking up a little bit, and there's some background noise. Is there any way you can post in the chat? Are you at a computer by chance? Uh, yeah, uh, that would be great. Thank you. Anyone else have questions in the meantime? Mm -hmm. I don't see his question yet. In the meantime, while we wait for that to come through, I um, just want to mention that we will be, for any of you that might be at IBM Tech Exchange um, next week, we will be there. We have a Tech Byte. We will be presenting on September 13th at 345. And several of our team members, uh, Mark included, will be there. So if you'd like to say hi or schedule a meeting, um, we will be in attendance. And I will actually post a link to the event page on our site if you want to schedule a meeting with one of our um, staff members, team members, that would be great. Okay, um, I don't see anything coming in, Mark. Oh, here it is. How can compressed data be handled? How compressed data can be handled? Is Are you saying that data is already compressed within, um, like you've done some sort of compression with the vSAM data already? Thank you. 
I, I mean, I can I DB two data. Okay. Um, so right now we don't have an integration into those that doesn't have integration into DB two because there's just so many, you know, JDBC connectors already out there in the market. Um, but if your data was in a format like BCM or QCM and it was compressed, I knew I do know clients that do that um, to save on space. You know, Lozen because it's running in a zip engine, it still has the full capabilities to uncompress and compress the data, and right? we can customize Lozen to do that. Um, we don't have any compression between Lozen on the mainframe and then uncompressing in the cloud or off the mainframe. Um, but we do, we would have the full capabilities if you're compressing the data in vSAM, for example, uh, we can un un uncompress it and um, still leverage the same APIs and connectors that we have today. Yeah, and Mark, maybe I'll just add, um, you know, it, like the compression, you you don't lose any of your ZOS capabilities. And so it'll integrate completely within like ZOS cryptographic services as well, even though that's not compression, that's encryption, but you, you maintain all of those um, ZOS functions. That's right. There's another question in the chat, Mark, if you want to call it out. We can write API to ZOSMF to access the data sets. Any reason why that is not part of this simple and secure access? I'm not familiar with, I don't know if I, I'm following that question. Vince, I don't know if you can see the chat, um, but maybe that's something you can help with. The question is, we can write API to ZOSMF to access the data sets. Any reason yeah. why that is not part of the simple and secure access? Elsa, can um, Vince talk on the call? Does he have access to audio? Yes. Yeah. Um, Mark, in your slide, uh, the the just before slide, which speaks of uh, simple and secure access to the data, your your first slide, which has uh, the big picture that you were just showing, uh, this one, simple yep. and secure access to mainframe data. Uh, with the ZOSMF latest version, or I think in the part <clears throat> 2.5 version also, IBM was saying like, hey, you can write APIs, you can access your data sets using an API. I can see you have provided all these connectors to access the data. I'm just trying to understand why ZOSMF is not part of that list. Is that a, is it is it different from what these tools can access the data and what type of data can be accessed using ZOSMF? Okay. I don't um I thought that runs on ZOS, right? And so as you write those APIs, you're going to write the custom code and everything to still access that data or integrate with the existing code that's there. That's going to cause you, I mean, that's going to increase MIPS and everything else, right? So one of the designs of Lozen is not to increase your MIPS, right? Okay. And run it, run it on zip. And that's why, so. Hey, hey, Mark, are you able to hear me? Yes, sorry, Vince, go ahead. Good. Yeah, apologies for that. I wasn't uh, I wasn't able to connect through my microphone for some reason. So, um, you know, the answer to the question, you know, a couple of things. Number one, the idea is that you don't have to go through, you know, yet another layer of API, and we provide direct access to the underlying data. Uh, and there are a few big benefits to that. Probably the biggest being that, you know, if you look at things like ZOSMF, the APIs they provide are generally web service based, you know, so they're HTTP transactions. And that's generally not an efficient way to move, you know, file 
file system data okay. across the network. You know, in our approach, however you're accessing the data, whether you're just using an NFS client or using one of our connectors, you don't have that kind of slow protocol in between. You have a protocol that's optimized for large buffers, for file system activity, for binary data, you know, for all of the kind of things that you want when you're accessing files in an optimum way. Now, you know, we certainly don't prevent you from having, you know, let's say a parallel world where you write your own applications that talk to really whatever you want to talk to. There's, you know, there's no problem with doing that. Yeah, you know, we just don't think that that's the optimum way to get mainframe data moving around. The other thing also is that um, you know many times what you're doing with uh, your mainframe data is a function of kind of the low level capabilities that you find on ZOS. So I'm not just trying to read a you know let's say a vSAM file in a sequential way. I'm trying to maybe position to a certain key value, maybe read backwards from that point, all of these advanced things that you can do with vSAM. We give you access to all of that, uh, whereas most of the APIs are more structured either towards, you know, read a single record or read an entire file, but you kind of lose the granularity to be able to do the full set of functions that you can do with, um, with something like vSAM. So, kind of in a nutshell, those are um, those are okay. the, the central points. Um, you know, and again, we we think that if you're doing kind of large scale production applications that involve a lot of data moving around, then you know the approach that we take is going to be you know just significantly uh, more efficient than you know what you might do out of the box. Plus, you know, as Mark said you relieve yourself from having to write that code. You know, it, it, it doesn't become yet another thing to have to maintain every time you need to change a file layout or any of that stuff. You know, we do all of that you know, essentially for free. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Good question though. All right. We might be out of questions. I think we're good. Also, last call, I guess, for questions, and then uh, and we'll be done. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, one other thing. I'll bring it up as well, right? I mean, I'll come back to this slide in case you weren't able to catch it, capture the URL, um, and, and we will share this, right? Like Elsa said, um, we do offer uh, services. So if you've got some challenging um, a strategy or access questions or uh, want to design a, a better approach for how to access uh, mainframe data on your mainframe or your client's mainframe, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. I mean, we've got... Uh, Hundreds of years of experience combined within uh, the virtual Z team to, to help you guys uh, strategize and come up with the right solution uh, for you all. So, perfect. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.